All right, greetings everyone again. We are recording this. Welcome to the Secure Retrospective for 11.7. And today we are going to start with Fabian. Fabio, sorry. <laughs> You're scared, man. I... Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we won't have Fabio with us. Uh, we we'll speak for him. Uh, we significantly changed the scope of uh, the 6666, which is the um, upper remediate issue. Um, we especially changed significantly the, the scope after the, scope, the, the start of the cycle. So uh, that, that's a problem because when we start the cycle, we commit on something. And uh, for that case, we didn't know what we were, coming to, we were committing to. So um, uh, there are some comments in the doc from uh, Camille, Tetiana, Andy, and myself. Uh, for the sake of time, I will try to sum up that. Please feel free to speak out if I'm doing something wrong. We need more time before the kickoff uh, to make sure that we go through all the issues and we spot all the, the missing points and the, the gas that, uh, that could happen during the next release. Um, so that's also part of the improvement and I think We've discussed that a lot already. Uh, we've been asking the engineering team to spend some time on the issues for the next situation, but I have the feeling that just telling it won't solve the problem at all. So we need to change something. And I think the solution from my point of view at least would be to make sure that we end up all development by the end of the month and not the future freeze so that we have some time to discuss with reviewers if needed to uh, spot and fix bugs in the current iteration before it's getting uh, shipped uh, to work on all the, the things that would be a leftover for the next iteration. What do you think of that? I see everyone nodding. No one wants to comment. We still have some time to kill because Olivier is uh, the next on the line. So I will move his point. Uh, is Lucas with us, by the way? The IP one? Yes, yes. I'm with you. Uh, I, will, I will move your point if you don't mind too. There. No, no worries. Yeah, Thank what you. went bad? Um, we had an issue that was, was catched late. That's the one that was resolved today. And um, I don't know if the better solution would have been to not ship the project filter um, because we didn't have, have an, had enough, uh, or we didn't have an, oh, enough time. <laughs> Sorry, brain is already farting. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah. Um, and I also think there are some UX things, but it's, it's good. It aligns with our iteration value that we just can go and. Um, 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 better things up in the next iterations. Yeah, Lucas, yeah. I have a ticket in um, for that. That's aligned with the ticket you put in for the UX stuff. I think we did get crunched on time again. I think the GDK or um, some issues with how, how data is coming in and we can see it was a problem. Um, when I reviewed it, um, I don't think there were more than 20 projects to see, so it was hard to see that issue right away. Um, but a, again, I think there's a bit of, uh, there's some issues getting parity with what we're seeing in GitLab that's live and what we're testing against or developing with, right? So it's just another thing that came up. Yeah, it's a, it's a common mistake because for us, it's, uh, you know, because of the missing seeding, um, it's, it's hard, you know, and we run into issues, whether it's just UX, just UX or also performance issues when suddenly a project has, has like 10,000 vulnerabilities or something like that, right? Um, so, and that, that just happens and you just encounter these issues once you actually use it. And I mean, that people are encountering these issues is actually good because it means they started using it and uh, they found something. 
I mean, we will never be 100% safe. And I mean, issues around not having anything or around having too much uh, are always there. So, yeah. Um, I just wanted, because otherwise I'm just too positive, I just wanted to put something on the bad side of things. Um, maybe Olivier is here yet, and yeah, we can switch over to him. And I think it's converging also in the idea of having this last week between the end of the month and the future phrase to do that kind of things. If we have something deployed on staging or dev, and you can ping me on this, it's really it's really good to have a, another pair of eye on that kind of features because um, as you can see with that issue, with just a few seconds and a few clicks, I was able to to spot that kind of bug. I I mean uh, I'm not saying that I'm better than the others to spot that kind of bugs, but I'm coming from different context and you know just stepping back from time to time it, it's it's good to, to to spot that kind of things uh so I, I would like to spend that time at the end of the iteration to really test the feature from end to end without anyone in on, on my shoulders <laughs> behind my shoulders saying you should click there i should click myself and make the whole process the whole user experience myself that's the best way to spot gasp in the ux in the feature itself, the bugs and the kind of things. Uh, I'd say that this is exactly what the uh, review app is aiming at. Because I think we yeah. should do that at the time of merging the feature, at least when it's switching the final merge request, because we have a lot of merge requests right now. So just before closing the issue, the last merge request, the, re the review app for that merge request should really be the place to do the QA of a feature. I mean, yes, I mean no. to be perfectly honest, I think it's fine like it happened with the, uh, with the project drop down. I don't think it's fine to catch it so late. I think it's perfectly fine that we merged something where we just can filter for 20 projects and then iterate on it. And it's just a bit unfortunate that we had to do another MR that needs to be ticked now by release managers. But um, other than that, I think it's, it's fine. And you're completely right. Re review apps, that uh, would be amazing if we could leverage them more early in the process. That could help, but that need, not in that case. If you take the review app for uh, the 6666. Uh, just a comment. Yeah, basically already. empty. Uh, excuse me, Philip. Um, just a comment on review apps. Um, I don't find them usable, actually, at least during the last week. Uh, they are, like, hanging constantly uh, or giving me 500 errors. Uh, is it behavior actually common and widespread, or it's just me? No, I, um, the quality team in the discussion group uh, yesterday uh, talked about that, and this is actually one thing they are focusing on to improve the reliability of the, of the review app because it also... Um, uh, implies some uh, a smoke test because some of the, the test uh, jobs are running on the review apps too. So they will be fixing that. And the other thing that is currently blocking the secure team is that uh, it's something Tatiana will work on in this situation is that we don't really see correctly the review app with the security uh, feature, uh, what, we, what the security feature needs. So it's not the best place today for us, but it's really the, the goal we should aim at. Thanks. And that's exactly what I wanted to add. We don't see that correctly. And in the case of this issue, we, we are also waiting for some other features to store the data in the database. So uh, even if we had the review app in place, we wouldn't be able to test that correctly because the database would be pretty empty. This is something that we should improve in the future. And Olivier, you have the two next points if you want to talk to them, please. Um, yes, yeah, the first one, uh, we are aware of it, but uh, it's worth mentioning in that we delayed way too much the release of the dependencies uh, scanning uh, project uh, again, because it's the second time. And this is not uh, 
really bad for the, the end user, for the customers, because we are still in time for the 22, but it really makes the release process and the QA process to hang a long time. And we obviously are doing mistakes like I did. Uh, in this case, uh, I, forgot to I forgot to enable the feature flag um, to enable the dependency scanning on, on the production uh, environment. Uh, so it just went out right of my mind and it was before the Christmas holidays and we just figured that uh, this week, uh, I, you figured that Philip uh, when trying to uh, display dependency scanning issues, uh, vulnerabilities on the, on the group security dashboard. So we shipped on production because it was a race candidate. So on production, we shipped the adding of dependency scanning vulnerabilities to the group level security dashboard, but it was empty. So it's not a big issue, but it demonstrates that we should um, force ourselves to stick more to the process and avoid um, delaying. Even if it's technically possible, this should, risk, this should, this should uh, stay really rare and uh, we should take um, more uh, care about um, staying in the process. I'm just keeping saying the same thing again. <laughs> so I would just stop talking. <laughs> Actually, you have the next point. Did you cover that one? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, the second one is uh, about storing container scanning uh, reports in the database. So it was merged uh, without being reviewed by someone else's team. And it actually went with some flows uh, in master. So we added a feature flag uh, in the reach right before the code freeze so that we are able to do some fixes before um, the, the, the 19, because when you are using a feature freeze, you are able to do some changes until the 19th of the month uh, with your approval of, of the risk manager, of course. Uh, but in the end, uh, I think we, we finally disabled it, but it's not, uh, the decision is not right yet taken, but we may finally disable totally container scanning due to other issues. And because we also figured out that the model is, uh, n it's not the best right now to cover uh, upcoming uh, needs for, for container scanning. And it might not be a good idea to start filling the database if we want to change it uh, or to add monetary uh, properties in next iteration. Yeah, makes sense. Anyone want to comment on, to comment on this? Okay, let's move to what can be improved. Um, they're forming the engineering evaluation with front end and back end. Uh, I guess the only thing we can change to improve that is uh, making sure that we keep the last week. If you see something else, feel free to add that as a comment in there. But otherwise, just saying it, I won't, I, I'm really not sure it's going to solve the problem. We've been there. I think in many retros already, and we have so many issues that we don't have any uh, any spare time to work on what, what's coming next. My suggestion to Fabio was to create some kind of office hours like uh, it was suggested for, uh, for the UX, and make sure that we have one meeting per week to discuss on the next issues uh, of the next iteration. That's the only way for everyone to come with their homework and actually discuss about that. Otherwise, I'm completely fine saying you you should do that and please do that for the next time, but I have the feeling that in the next race row, we will have the same problem. So let's see how, how it's going. Yeah, I, I think it's also due to uh, how our team is made and what we're working on. Uh, I mean, for, for the... the the code diff, um, I mean, the, um, uh, the feature that, that was uh, delayed or the scope was reduced about uh, providing the, um, the, the patch for dependency scanning updates. Uh, it's something really complicated for people not familiar with, with, the, with this kind of feature. And on top of that, we are also 
I said, uh, a new team, not really familiar also with uh, the, the GitLab code base. So maybe with the upcoming changes in 2019, we will be more focused on specific areas. So we will have more knowledge about the upcoming features because some of the issues that are planned for the next iteration, we are just totally blind about how to do them. And that doesn't help on planning them correctly and estimating them correctly. Yeah, I agree with you. There are two things that we can add also on this. Uh, maybe we'll add that to the doc. Uh, the first one is sometimes we are expecting some other dependency, a component that is developed by another team. We don't know if it's going to be ready or not. Uh, sometimes it's, for example, the reports. We were waiting for them, not for that uh, feature especially, but you see what I mean. We were waiting for the reports, and if they are done, we can use them. If they are not, we need the plan B. So uh, that's a lot of expectations and that's a lot of planning uh, in advance. So sometimes it's just better to wait for the last minute to have all the details. And the second point is we, as you said, we rarely spot all the, um, the edge cases of a feature before starting to work on it. And I'm not sure that this is something we can work around or uh, or find something uh, something better to do with it. Uh, okay. Least, if, we keep, yeah. if we keep switching between subject, we we can't. There is no way we can. I mean, when you're playing with Sart and the next generation, you're playing with Dast. You're all, you're playing with totally different. Project and features, and it's it's not easy to to um, uh, think in advance about upcoming issues. Yeah, I I agree with that too, especially because they all of those all of the different report types act so differently. So when I design them, I design them to output to the user the same way and as we've seen in a few new issues, it doesn't really work like that. So it, it's even hard for me to understand like what, how we should be showing this data um, to the user that's beneficial if it's kind of very different, right? Yeah, while well, I'm writing my comment down, uh, Olivier, do you have the next point again on the feature flags? Yeah, I just wanted to have advertise on uh, feature flag and um, suggest. I already talked about it in the weekly, but it's worth talking in, in, in the retrospective too. Uh, please, uh, if you're working on the, raised, uh, the GitLab Raise application, of course, because we don't have such option on our side project, but uh, please use uh, the feature flag. It, it's really handy and it allows to, it's not a good thing to advertise on this, but it can help in some uh, cases. So as I said, you can kind of skip the, the code freeze pressure if you have your feature behind the feature flag. It's not good in terms of procrast procrastinating and doing the job later, but it's good for avoiding the review rush and merging things uh, within the hurry because there is a cut freeze date. Instead, you can have one or two days more to correctly review and eventually fix some little things before merging in. So this is uh, really easy to set up. Um, please use it and it's, it's really handy. So the default approach for us is to cover uh, any new feature uh, with the feature flag while we're in alpha state. Uh, even if we are not in an alpha state, because it's something really rare at GitLab to use the term alpha or beta on the feature, because we are constantly iterating on every feature actually. So <laughs> kind of everything, it will be alpha or beta. Um, but uh, yes, basically, if you're introducing, introducing something, you're better introducing it behind a feature flag. Uh, I also forgot to mention one important thing uh, is about the default enabled option. Uh, you have to keep in mind that the feature flag, uh, you can act on the feature flag on our own environment, like staging or the production environments, but you can't act on the feature flag 
for the on-premise instances from our customers. So it's really important to consider that if you set a photo enabled false, false, sorry, um, it will be disabled on all our customers' on-premise instances. So, and the opposite is true. <laughs> if you said if all true, uh, like this is the case for continuous scanning. I currently have a merge request open because uh, I put it with default enabled true and I disable it for the production environment, but I have to submit another merge request to remove the default enabled true because we don't want the feature to work on the on-premise uh, instances. So keep in the, keep this, please keep this in mind when, when using the feature flag. I mean, like, uh, uh, it's, I think it's more about like practice. Uh, it's whether you think that something should be enabled by default or whether you should explicitly enable that. Uh, like from my perspective, I said that like everything should be enabled by default. And as a last resort, you should have to disable something. It just makes, makes like configuration, maintaining, ensuring that everything is on the green path. And like, if you see that staging is okay, uh, it basically means that you don't have to do anything else on production and like you know that it's working. If it's not working, you just can disable this feature uh, ahead of the time before it gets deployed. But if it's still working and you, you, you don't manage to fix that, you can quickly prepare a merge request and still merge it before we uh, finish the, the, like before we finish, uh, release the, the actual release, not a release candidate. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean it's it's up to like to, to the to the example. If something like I would say if something is finished and you assume that it's finished, it should rather be enabled by default. If something is like in fly, it should be disabled by default because this piece alone doesn't make sense to be enabled. Uh, so I, I think it's based on basically on how complete is the feature. If it's like the, the incremental iteration that is not finished, I would say disable. If it's done, just enable that by default to, to not be parked later on having to remove that. Like, change that status. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, for the sake of time, and we have the opportunity to keep that uh, meeting under the 30 minutes. So I think we are going to head for that. And we just have three points in what went well, and we all we we all will be able to attend the company call because there are a lot of announcements today. So let's start with uh, Tetiana. You want to talk about small remarks? Uh, yeah, so we have this uh, big feature about uh, filters in the security dashboard. And uh, because uh, it was split it in a smaller task on different MRs, uh, it allows us to iterate inside of the iteration and synchronize with front end. So it's not good that there is no Sam because maybe he have some different different uh, vision of this process. But uh, from my point of view, it was great to have smaller Mars. Great point. I, I didn't tell my comment in the doc, but and Fabian is not there, but Fabian did also a great job with um, the auto remediate by splitting the work in many small Mars, even if in the end, we just had one big MR, but we had the chance to, to see every uh, step or every part of the feature in a, in a different MR, and that was super useful, even if uh, in the end we were just closing them uh, because they were not add, uh, adding any value or were, they were not working as standalone, but that, that was super helpful. We should do that whenever we can. Uh, Lucas IP, wanted to... Yes, so um, despite our changing of the scope and everything, um, it still landed, it landed with docs, with screenshots, that's awesome. I want to thank everyone, uh, and it landed despite the holidays, which is awesome, um, which is my next point. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, really interesting to me because we basically just, we normally ha would have had, I think, 21 days in the, in the release cycle, working days. And basically taking off Christmas and New Year's means five to seven days taking off, which is like a quarter of the release cycle. So um, yeah, that's that. Um, any comments? 
Um, I just wanted to add that yes. this is also um, this month that we started the reaction rotation, which means having one team member that is not working on deliverables. But on the other side, we had new team members <laughs> coming. So, but that, that's still a point. <laughs> All right, is there uh, anything else what I mentioned to discuss to improve? I think it's, we are in January. I uh, will take the, the two minutes uh, remaining or uh, four minutes remaining. I really like the idea of having once a year uh, a meeting with the team, very casual. Uh, the, the best would be a retreat, but we're not there here. I don't want to organize that right now. It's going to happen in uh, 2019, don't worry, but not really soon. So I want something earlier than that to see what we could improve, not a retro of the, the previous iteration, but a retro of the previous year. There are probably a lot of areas in QA or I don't know, in the processes that we can improve and we never take the time to discuss that kind of things uh, quietly. So I will organize that if you don't mind and I will invite all of you. We will have a one more session with a, a kind of brainstorming session and I'm pretty sure that a lot of good ideas could come from that, that kind of meeting. Also some new features. This is the kind of meeting where when we spot something that is meeting, missing for us, we can uh, convert that to a feature that would be helpful not only for our team, but for a lot of customers as well. So this is something that I will uh, put in place and I will ping you once it's there. And with that, if you don't have any more questions or comments, nope. Thank you very much. Or enjoy the rest of your day and see you in the company call. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.